I have made many videos teaching people how to mod Skyrim, and even now in 2021, there is no shortage of individuals that are looking to learn the ins and outs of modding Bethesda Game Studios titles, and I can definitely see why. Games like Skyrim and Fallout 4 are still quite high on the Steam charts, garnering over 20,000 peak concurrent players at the time of making this video. They don't seem like they're slowing down and have been holding steady here for a good many years. If I had to make a prediction, I'd say that at this point in the game's life cycles, almost all the vanilla players are gone, and that even the most conservative players have at least one mod installed on their game, be that manually, like dragging and dropping files into their game directory, through a mod manager like Mod Organizer 2, or Vortex, or possibly even the in-game Bethesda net. Point is, people still want to play these games and most want to do it with mods that aid their experience. A certain portion of those probably even want to see how far they can push their experience by overhauling their game with vast quantities of mods. I'm not here today to discuss which of these methods are better for modding Skyrim or Fallout 4. There are many people that have made videos covering this subject extensively, myself included, and besides, there is a right answer. Today, I want to talk about something altogether different. I want to propose a different question that people should be asking. Not how they should be modding their game, or which mods they should use in their next playthrough. No. Let's start real basic here and ask ourselves whether we should even be modding our game to begin with. More specifically, is modding still a necessary part of the Bethesda Game Studios gameplay experience in 2021? Now before you go off getting Vietnam flashbacks about vanilla Skyrim or Fallout 4, let me explain. I'm going to begin by defining what I believe to be a modder, or rather, what modding is. I feel like there are two popular definitions for this term. Some people define this as the act of actually creating mods, so developing a plugin, writing scripts or code, and maybe even creating assets like textures or 3D models. Others, I believe the majority, consider the act of installing mods created by other people to be modding. I'm inclined to agree more with the latter definition, but for the sake of this video, let's call those that install mods, modders, and those that create mods, mod authors. Cool. Uh, but why does this even matter? Well, I think it comes down to intent. What do you want to be doing? Do you want to be creating content for the game, or actually playing it? I think this is a question that people don't ask themselves. Until quite recently, it was very much implied that if you wanted to play a Bethesda Game Studios game with mods, you had to go through the process of downloading and installing said mods. So proposing this question was rather pointless. Not so in modding communities like Minecraft, which have had access to large-scale mod packs since almost the very beginning of their lives. The reason I personally believe modding begins at the act of installing mods, rather than going one step further and creating them, is for a little-known reason people don't consider, especially if they're new. To explain what I mean, let's consider this from the perspective of a typical PC gamer. So here I am, a generic PC gamer. I've decided I want to play a new game. What do I do? I open up Steam or any other DRM platform these days, find something that piques my interest, whip out my credit card, and install it. After some time, I'll be able to smoothly launch and play it, right? It's simple and hassle-free. We just played the role of a consumer and now we're going to have a smooth, pain-free experience. As long as we did a little bit of research and stayed away from any questionable early access titles. Now let's shift things up a little bit. Again, typical PC gamer here, only this time I've finally given in to the raving that's been going on the last 10 years about this game called Skyrim. Again, I go to Steam, find Skyrim Special Edition, and buy it with my card. Download it and start playing. Oh, but wait, why, why has everyone been praising this? 
The graphics look like hot garbage, the game plays like a stiff sack of potatoes, and the combat's akin to an iOS hack and slash. What's so great about it? Reluctantly, I play a few hours before putting it down because it just doesn't stack up to games from 2020. Confused, I go to my friend that's hailed the game for the last five years and ask him what's up. I mean, this game's mediocre at best today, why does he like it so much? Oh, you've been playing vanilla. Yeah, you gotta install some mods, my dude. That's half the experience. He starts talking about the hundreds of mods that are installed on his game that fix the graphics, bugs, update the combat, add new quests, world spaces, enemies, and on and on. Intrigued, I go home and start researching the process of adding mods to my game. I've installed mods on a game or two through the Steam Workshop. How hard can it be? Oh, wait, this game doesn't have the Steam Workshop? So you start seeing the problem yet? Best case scenario, this individual stumbles upon a rabbit hole of information about Mod Organizer 2 or other mod managers, load order, and all that jazz. Worst case, they install a few mods from BethesdaNet. Either way, what's going to end up happening, and indeed does happen every day, I witness it constantly on my Discord server, they're going to carelessly install a bunch of mods trying to get to playing the game as quickly as possible, and in the process create an unstable, crash-prone, or semi-playable, janky game, complete with all the atrocious modded game features, broken NPCs, weird models, unintended behavior, and imbalance. And why wouldn't they? In the span of a day, they've gone from being consumers of content to being aggressively shoved into the role of game developers, all without even knowing it. And most of them have no previous IT or computer science experience to speak of. Now, without a doubt, at this point, there are a few of you, most likely with a little bit of modding experience, thinking, Elias, aren't you blowing this just a tiny bit out of proportion? Comparing the act of downloading mods and arranging them in Mod Organizer 2, then running loot to like full-on programming and processes that actually require hard technical skills? And to that my response is... This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. My friend, if you think that adding mods to a Bethesda Game Studios game is a simple matter of downloading, activating, and running loot, then you are oblivious to a whole world of things. Adding mods to your game is a process that is all about identifying resolving or ignoring conflicts in a matter that is most appropriate to the conflict in question. This could be simply choosing one texture file over another, or as complex as merging and modifying C++ code to get two mods to work together smoothly. This is complex high-level decision making. Most of the time it involves looking through plugin records and choosing the data you want to win out then arduously testing your game to make sure that you've made no mistakes in the process. In order to be able to make these decisions effectively, you need to know what that data does. But my point is, if looking through, compiling, modifying data, then testing it for accuracy isn't some form of software development, I don't know what is. And the fact of the matter is, these things aren't optional. If you want a perfect, bug-free game, contrary to the popular opinion of novices in the modding community. I mean, when's the last time you opened up Xedit and looked through a specific plugin to make sure there were no conflicts present between your mods? Or when there was an issue in your game, when was the last time that you did hours of trial and error work to get to the root of the problem instead of asking someone else on the internet for help on a specific case they probably have never heard of. 
For most of you, it was probably never, or very few times. Let's face it, we like to rely on word of mouth, which omits information at the best of times and totally misleads the rest of the time. I'm guilty of this myself, by the way. So it might sound like I'm bashing on people that don't want to put in the work into modding their game, but in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. I think there's room for both types of people in the BGS modding community. Those that enjoy building and maintaining mods, and others that just want to get out there and play their damn game. Especially now that it's more possible than ever with mod lists from Wabajack. Unfortunately, people don't yet seem to understand this, however. Which is why I again propose the question. Do you want to mod your game, or do you want to play your game? Because believe me, there is a difference. I know what the answer is for 90% of you. You want to play the game, and that's perfectly okay. That's why people like myself make mod lists, so that all of you don't have to put in the legwork. At the same time, you should also expect that your experience is entirely dependent on the author of your mod list and that many out there are just as inexperienced as you. Meaning that you will have the same poor quality issues you had before if you pick a bad list. So choose wisely. Now if you are part of the 10% that does actually want to mod, that means dealing with conflicts, bugs, and staring at spreadsheets, you should be prepared for what that entails. Depending on the scope of your desired outcome, you could be spending as much as hundreds or even thousands of hours in your endeavor. Expect that you'll be confused, frustrated, and that you'll have to learn to do things on your own. Expect to put in many hours of playtesting because if you want to get something similar or better in quality than any of the previously well-established mod lists, then you better bet that they have done all of those things and more and that their authors aren't playing the game at all, but instead developing it, and have been for many years before this. The takeaway here is that you should be realistic with what you can accomplish. If you're a trust fund child, and have many tens of hours a week to spend on your newfound hobby, plus are extremely self-motivated and are eager to learn new things through rigorous trial and error testing, go for it. Overhaul your game with mods, or maybe you're just someone that likes to tinker away with software. You'll learn a lot, and the experience will be rewarding. On the other hand, if you have kids at home, work 40 hour weeks, and just want to play a really awesome modded Skyrim in your limited free time, do some research and install someone's popular and well-tested Wabajack mod list. It'll save you a lot of headache and get you to your goal faster. Everything will be automatically pre-compiled for you while you sit back and stream Netflix, and you'll get in-game, more than likely, the very same day. If you're looking for a great mod list to start with, check out my best mod list for Skyrim. I just released the graphics and visuals module. It's really stable and constantly improving from bug reports and suggestions submitted by you guys. Plus, it's also got the best graphics available if you have the hardware to run them. Link is down below if you want to give it a go. Anyway, I hope you learned something, namely whether you want to play or mod and that one doesn't necessarily require the other anymore. Like the video if you haven't yet, let me know down below if you agree, disagree, or just like sitting on the fence. Check out our Discord for updates on videos and the best mod list, or to just chat and chill.